which looks a lot like Adansonia, which we just saw, and also, to note, it looks like a new version of Adansonia was just updated, which I can't really demonstrate why it's different now, but basically those, if you're watching the last game, those three metal extractors I was talking about that are the all-terrain only attacking metal extractors, yeah, there's now a path going from the tidal flats around the corner up to that area. I'm curious how that affects the viability of ships in the map, or amphibs or any other way of getting around the water and attacking from the fjords. But that at least makes it so that it's a bit more even. You don't have to go all-terrain in order to be able to deal with your opponent's mexes. It just helps. So, on to La Isla Bonita, which I actually haven't played yet. It looks pretty, though. I mean, it's a bit... I think Sprung just has one particular texture set they're using for these maps, and it's not a bad texture set. It just needs a little bit something. It's... Yeah, it's a good start. It's a good starting point, good foundation. A little bit... I don't want to say boring, but I don't know what other word to use. Anyway, Anakin fills us on La Isla Bonita, which looks like it's basically a very similar design to... Actually, it's not really that similar design to the last one. Actually, looks very StarCrafty. Looks very StarCrafty. The expansion around here, that would be a gold mineral expansion in StarCraft. The same with this, and then and the natural expansion right here with a nice choke point. Yeah, this this was probably based off a StarCraft map, or at least it's definitely inspired by the StarCraft -y cliffy style. As was the as was Adansonia, but Adansonia didn't quite feel that way as much. Let's begin. Let's see what they do. So Feltas going for the jump plant and Anakid going for amphibs. Now, it looks like this map does not have... Oh, wait, never mind. Ha, so much for generally protected. I missed that bit. I'm not sure if... Oh, shoot. That was something. I... You'll learn a lot about how I run my casts when I do them, because there's always something that screws up I have to fix in the moment. Live, everybody! So, yeah, as I was saying, as you can see, this area back here is pathable. Into the water, or is it? Okay, it's actually really hard to tell because it's shadowed. But yeah, into the water. They can go in there, or go across here, and come up here. So the natural expansion actually is not that safe. It does have a choke point from land, which means that Philtos is going to have a hard time getting an Anakin, but Anne can go, go round the back, round up here, round, up and around, and into here. And that would totally work. I don't know if they do that. If you did do that, Anarchid is watching the stream right now. If you did that, do not tell me. I want to see it happen. Or if it didn't happen, I don't want to know that it... I... Well, okay, I guess... Yeah. If it doesn't happen, I don't want to know. Leave me in suspense. Leave me in the suspense. I want to believe it'll happen. Feels like really going all jumpy. I oh, know, both players going for the recon com. Yeah, that's a good choice. One thing I'm curious about is, just so you know, there's a bunch of work being done to change the commander system completely. Where, instead of having these pre-built comms that you build up through the website in order to work out your various upgrades and modules and such for different levels, that is being not quite eliminated, but essentially supplemented by an additional system that allows you to actually change the modules on the fly. So instead of hitting the morph button, I can't really demonstrate right now, but instead of hitting the morph button, and then just having the commander upgrade to the next pre-baked set of modules, you hit a button that then brings up a module menu, which allows you to select the modules, and then upgrade. It's a bit more like the way Subcom does it, but more flexible still than that. However, I'm fairly certain that the pre-baked module lists are used as the defaults, so if you want to have a particular set of modules that you always use, or you typically use, and you just want to be able to change it up every once in a while, that's how the system is designed. The system is designed to let you do that. But yeah, that'll be interesting. I don't know if there is a recon comm chassis or a similar jump chassis. I think there is. But it's still in development. I know that the strike comm and battle comm are supposed to get... Uh, strike comm, battle comm, and the siege comm are getting folded into one. I think it's Guardian Commander or something like that. And then I'm pretty sure it's essentially recon and support as the other commanders. 
but I'm not entirely sure. It's just that's what I've seen so far of just keeping track of development. Like, basically, the main battling commands, like a strike, battle, and siege, are being folded into essentially just strike. But don't quote me on that because it's still in active development. I still think it's a cool thing, though. So it'll be interesting to see how that develops. i just trying to remember if there was a recon chassis or if there's going to be. Or if it's just going to be a module. If you're going to have a jump module that you apply to any commander. But that's pure speculation. At this point, Anarchid's still not going around the back. They do have this area protected just in case something happens around the back. And, ooh, is that going to do anything? I mean, if something comes into these flats, are the pyros going to get hit? I'm kind of curious. And it looks like Anarchid, oh, they are using the water. They are going around there, trying to figure out what's going on, see if Filthos has expanded over in the back. And no, they haven't. Actually, wait, does Anarchid know where, Anarchid doesn't know where Filthos is. Oh, wow. Yeah, this is actually an FFA map. The two, the three star points are here, here, and here. And I don't think Anarchid actually knows that Filthus is over in the north. Seem to suspect they're over to the west. Which is not the case. But now Anarchid knows. Which is probably why they didn't attack from behind at first. But now they probably will. Hopefully will, because that would be an awesome way to attack. And I don't think Filthus is expecting it. I'm not sure if Feldos is even aware that's an option. They probably are. But it's not the most obvious thing in the world. There is a ramp there, and it's got the ramp texture, sort of the ramp shading going on. But still, it's not the most obvious thing in the world. I wonder if Feldos actually suspects that. They do have two Lotuses. They probably do. I expect they suspect it just because of that. But the real question, is Anarchid going to use it? The answer appears to be no. They're going frontally with land units and stockpiling Banshees in the back. The Banshees are going to be the assault force from behind, and that's pretty typical. Nothing wrong with that. It's just both this map and Adansonia have really neat paths you can attack from using Amphib units or Hover units or ships. Well, Amphib units in particular for this map. Ships don't seem to be quite as useful as they are at Adansonia, but Amphibs definitely are useful. Actually, what I kind of find cool about this map is the center area is big enough that Amphibs aren't that dominant. Like, Adansonia is much friendlier to Amphibs than, than La, Lina, La Ila Bonita is, the map we're on right now. I don't think that it's going to be as much of an Amphib matchup. Like, Adansonia seems to be trying to even out Amphibs with other bots, and Amphibs are definitely strong in that map. I mean, there's a lot of reasons to go for Jump Bots, a lot of reasons to go for Amphibs, some reason to go for Spider, some for Hover. Not much for Hover, mind you. And a little bit for Ships as a second or third factory. But on this map, there's actually some call for going straight bots. I mean, you have to defend the water a little bit, but there's less water to be used against you. So I'm curious to see if that will end up being a thing. And then you just use Cranes to figure out how to, or just to get these last few Metal Extractors over in the back there. That will be interesting. And Banshee's coming in, getting rid of Feldhaus' commander. At 36 metal, that's not the biggest deal, but it is a problem because of expansion. Feldhaus' commander is the only thing expanding over here, meaning Feldhaus is losing this entire corner of the map. Everything there is dead. Feldhaus' counterattack doing a decent job, but not great. And Anarchid with a massive economic lead, mostly due to overdrive from the looks of it, but actually not just overdrive, they've expanded a lot. Feldhaus has not expanded over to the shallows. They haven't really expanded over to the center much. There's plus three expansions in the center, too. They've expanded over here, but they only had their commander. That was it. They did not expect a gunship attack. Even though seven minutes into the game, that's a common thing. But no, they did not read a gunship attack and did not prepare for it. They have a razor here, but like I said before, Banshees hitting razors directly, Banshees will win. Tridents, on the other hand, no. Tridents are death. But it looks like the Banshees are going for the suicide attack, killing off everything they can before going for the Razor, if they're going to go for the Razor at all. And that's, well, not a terrible attack. But Philthos right now was mainly damaged by the Commander Destruction. And that was the main problem. The Commander Destruction meant they lost all the Metal Extractors. They lost about a third of their economy right there. 
And at this point, they have quite a bit of reclaim to deal with this, but at the same time, there's more units coming in! Filthos is still getting hit, Anarchid's not stopping. And Filthos not trying to go around- I mean, they don't really have anything to go around the bottom anyway. They have gunships, but they're using them entirely defensively at this point. Which makes sense, you kind of have to. So they're being quite defensive, which is fine. If they're defensive, they take the territory, and then they reclaim all this- how much metal is here? Thousand metal! Yeah, that's a good amount of metal! Send, like, four of these on- four of the Freakers on there, that'll even up the economy for about... a minute. That's a long enough time, I think, to be able to get an army, to be able to get back the territory, and then send other stuff to around to expand, and just generally get a more stable economy going. But yeah, a minute's worth of reclaim, especially since Feldoss is still attacking. Sorry, Anarchist is still attacking. If Feldoss can defend that successfully and get the reclaim going, they will be able to just keep this going for a while. Actually, the main base, too. That's 400 metal. Yeah, they can have economic parity for a good minute, minute and a half. Which may not sound like a lot, but that's actually a pretty sizable chunk of time. Like, that is more than enough time to be able to build up an army on par with Anarchid. And set out to expand. Like, and have the army to support an expansion, I mean. Within that minute or minute and a half. Especially if Anarchid's throwing away forces. Feldhaus has a comeback opportunity here. And they're, start, they're sort of taking it. They are getting a bit of an economy, but they need to be on par at least. Anarchid's continuing to grow. I don't see any other buildings quite yet, but they are continuing to grow. And they are going to be a threat soon enough. I mean, they're throwing units away, and Feldhaus is doing a good job being economical about saving their own units. But it's not enough. The economic advantage will give Anarchid the lead they need. Okay, there we go. Feldhaus now, are they... Looks like they are indeed, or at least some of the caretakers are dealing with this. They are reclaiming a bit more. Still not enough. It needs to be very focused, especially in this front area, which could be lost at any minute. There's so much metal there. And this is the problem I meant. Like, it's kind of hard to have... Like, there's no way that Feltos can expand without getting enough tridents to make Anarchid respect their anti-air. And getting enough ground forces to make Anarchid respect the front, and also to be able to push back Anarchid. Because Anarchid is slowly but surely creeping their way in. I mean, they're losing units in the process, but they have the economy to make up for it. Feltos has not taken advantage of the amount of reclaim they have. How many Freakers do they even have? They've got four Freakers. That's tiny. I'd almost recommend building a Caretaker up in the front, just to take all this reclaim. Now, Feltos continuing to attack forward. They do have a decent amount of Tridents, and it looks like Anarchid respects that. Not bad, another 6 metal. Worth having. But, at the same time, the expansion over to the east is getting hit. Anarchid's creeping in. There's not much Feltos, Feltos has. Eventually, they will fall. And Feltos' offensive forces are just not able to sustain this either. Like, Anarchid has the money. They have the money to lose their army. Feltos does not have the money to expand. They don't have the money to support an expansion with army. And Anarchid, they have flying units. They're around the map. They can they can take out naked expansions wherever they'd like. Although Anarchid's commander getting threatened heavily looks like it should live. Oh yeah, it's gonna live. Not in the best of positions though, but it's... Oh, just barely defend a rocket finish... Oh no, Jack finished it off. Just barely Feltos' Jack finishes out the commander... But this is 77 metal. The only difference is that, okay, this aggressive expansion, the aggressive defenders, that's going to be gone, but it doesn't matter. The damage has been done. The rapiers have f a clear shot at basically everything here. And field us this giant field of reclaim, not able to take it. it. The time is gone. Like, they can't really take this reclaim anymore. And they have the area over here, which has a bit of reclaim. Still 250 reclaim, that's still good. But yeah, that's not enough. That's This is game, unfortunately. Field us. I don't... Like, they had the comeback opportunity, and unfortunately, they didn't make use of it. Like, that's the thing. That's where it becomes really important when you have a lot of reclaim to try to take it as quickly as possible. Because Field us has the production for it. Well, they got like 40 metal worth of production capacity. Now, build a couple more caretakers. Not a big deal. Build two or three more caretakers, and then just reclaim the lot of it. Like, this entire thing. Reclaim it. That would have... That would have, not right now, but would have given economic parity with four or five caretakers. Sorry, four or five, four or five caretakers would give economic parity now. With four or five freakers, that would have been economic parity right there, and Anarchid wouldn't have been able to just deal with this. They wouldn't have been able to get this massive army, and Feldas would have been able to just match them, would have matched them move for move. 
It would have had the money to do it. Only for about a minute and a half, but it would have been long enough to secure the territory needed to make it a consistent amount of power. Rather than just, as long as I have reclaimed amount of power. And some more reclaim being taken here. Oh, wait, no. This is... This is Anarchid. Anarchid's going for the reclaim here. And that's game. Filthos throwing into hell. Ah. It's an interesting map, but... Yeah... The map really didn't factor into it too much. It factored a little bit, and I think it made Philthos a little bit overconfident about their expansion potential. But overall, didn't really factor in. I'm kind of surprised Anarchid did not tack around the back at all. I'm a little surprised Philthos did not take the Shallows. They would have had to set up some Urchins and other defenses just in case, but still, they didn't take the Shallows, and that's much closer to the main base to deal with things. Especially as they're playing jump bots. They can jump up and down here. This is close enough. Oh, what? You said Dante? Oh, yeah, you said you transported a Dante. No, I meant going underwater and going up this ramp into the natural expansion. I see there is a Dante in the main base, but yeah, the game was over by then. I mean, the Dante almost didn't matter. It's cool. I mean, I probably should have taken a bit more note of that, but at that point, Anarchy had already won. Long since one, so that that was a little bit unfortunately one-sided. I I don't I'm wondering how Felthos how much they play new maps. Because I noticed this in Anansonia, they seem to be a little bit timid. In both cases, they were expanding slower, they're building up slower, they seem to be not entirely sure what their next move was. Which surprises me since I know that one of their favorite maps is hide and seek, which is also a fairly cliffy map, and a not very popular map. Mind you, it may just be that they're very practiced on that map and not particularly familiar with these maps, which I don't think anyone's familiar with. But they are... I don't know, I get the, I get the impression Field Thoughts is not great at dealing with new maps. They're okay with it. They probably still beat me. But they're not... It feels like Anarchid's much more adept at that. Though maybe that Anarchid is a bit more experienced here, but I just get the impression... Flips up as well in the last game. I get the impression that Field Thoughts has a bit of a weakness with newer maps. I don't know if that's true. I mean... That's something that they know more than they know better than I do. It's just the impression I'm getting from these last couple games. They might have just been tired. These games were actually played pretty close to each other, I'm fairly certain. Let's see. This one's played No, not really. They're played a day apart. So yeah. I am surprised Feldas didn't go for the reclaim though. They must be rusty. That could just be it. They just might not have played in a little while. They might just be rusty, because this amount of reclaim, Feldas. I don't know if Hilda has to be one to leave that reclaim lying around. Like, that's very atypical. Or at least it's atypical from a high-level player perspective in general. I don't think Felthos typically leaves it land just lying there. Hmm. Anyhow, that's going to be it tonight. So I hope you enjoyed that, and thanks for watching. Have a good night, everyone.